And um, New York Anime Fest had a costume contest uh, scheduled in 2009 called the Yume Costume, uh, Yume Cosplay Cup. And uh, it was a craftsmanship and presentation based contest. And the grand prize was a trip to Japan, um, as well as a $1,000 shopping spree in Japan. And um, it was a really lucrative prize, and it also sort of, it encouraged the cosplayers who wanted to enter to sort of, you know, really up their game. And um, I thought it's, it was a good time for me to, you know, I actually could take enough time off to make a more complicated costume, and I thought, you know, might as well give it a go. And I thought the contest would definitely ensure that there would be some good competition and it might be a good challenge for myself to, you know, enter it. And then um, after I decided to enter the contest, I was thinking about what costumes I could do for it. And uh, I just happened to come across um, a picture of uh, Vampire D and I was like, oh, Carmilla, wait. And so I asked a friend of mine, uh, her name is Anna, if she would do the contest with me because as a vampire, you always need a bite victim. So she made the costume of Charlotte go along with mine, even though she lived a few states away from me. So we would like talk on the phone and sort of uh, try to pick out fabrics together. Like I would shift her fabrics that I used and so that she could have the same gold uh, material on hers and sort of try to coordinate with each other. And um, so whenever you decide to do a costume, the most, the first thing you want to do is find good reference pictures. And that's what I did for the next week or so. I just, uh, I started looking for materials, but especially I started looking for as many reference pictures as possible. Uh, thank goodness I did have the movie on DVD, so I took some screenshots of it. Um, you know, like this, the, her, the back of her dress, um, it's only shown for about a second in the movie, and I was like, I need to know what it looks like. And so that's why um, when, you know, you pause the movie and uh, take a screenshot, then you really can make sure you get all these different angles. Um, it was always like, it was always kind of frustrating if like, you wanted to do a costume from, say, the new Final Fantasy or something, and all you see is the concept art, and you just get the front, and that's it. So you don't know what the back looks like, and you have to kind of make it up. And then when the game comes out, and you do like, you know, you see all the angles, and you're like, man, I did that wrong, and I have to redo it. So uh, I try to get as much reference picture as possible of all the different angles, so I would make a mistake like that. Um, now with Carmilla, um, choosing the fabrics was the second uh, toughest, I guess, um, the, the, the second very important uh, step. And you, what I wanted to do was to be very accurate to the character, but also to give the costume some more texture. Um, so I'll show you some pictures of the finished costume and then I'll go into um, how I made it. Um, so I ended up choosing velvet, uh, a Madonna velvet for the costume because I thought it was very luscious and very sort of luxurious um, fabric and also I liked the way that velvet flows and photographs. Um, and then uh, to supplement the velvet to, you know, so not everything is velvet, I used this, um, I used various uh, actually upholstery fabrics, so they were like, you know, uh, textured and uh, um, had some somewhat of a sheen to it, somewhat of a, just a little bit of a grain in it so that it wasn't just like plain satin um, to sort of give the costume extra layers. Um, so these are some of the pictures. You can see my friend Anna. This was as on stage. If you can see them well enough. 
So once you choose the fabrics, then uh, it actually is really important to make sure that you buy enough of the fabric. And in my case, I had to basically go to every fabric store. Like I chose Joann's as my fabric store because it's a chain and whatever fabrics that Joann gets in, they usually can get more of it. And so to be safe, I wanted to have the option of buying more of the same material. Like the velvet, I did run out of. So I had to go back and um, that store did not have any more. So they had to call another store and then get it in, things like that. And same with the trim, the black trim on the costume, like all the, the lines. That had to be one specific trim and I literally bought just about every yard of it in, you know, the greater Atlanta area. And so it is, you know, it's always better to buy too much fabric than not enough fabric. Um, that's, that's always my philosophy, because then you can use the leftover fabrics for maybe another costume, even if it was just a lining or something. Um, so just getting all the fabrics together was quite an ordeal, but once you have all the materials, then it is easy to start working on it step by step. So I'm just going to go to my little in progress folder right here. So I took pictures along the way, and uh, there I like to work on different parts at the same time so I don't get bored. Because if I just concentrated on one single thing and worked on it until it was done, then moved on to another thing, I would, you know, anytime you run into a snag, then you're just going to be really demotivated to continue on. So I always try to work on two or three things at the same time. So like maybe maybe this part has to be painted, it needs to dry. While it dries, I can do something else. And so um, I sort of break down the costume into mini projects. So I just look at, you know, just the shoulder pads, for example. This was my sample shoulder pad. This was the first thing I did was just like take some foam and see if I can even like create the form and just masking taped it. Um, put it on my dress form, I was like, ah, that is way too, you know, that, that just looks, that's nothing like it. So I did another one after this. It's like, oh, that looks a little more like it has a little bit more shape. And um, I just hot glued it together, you know, just, just to see if I can even get the shape right. Um, it actually looks like a, the Futurama spaceship for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, hmm, she has two spaceships on each shoulder. So, and then I was also um, sculpting out the, she has like a necklace. And in the center, it looks kind of like a scorpion that's been just poured, had, had gold poured all over it. So here's me trying to sculpt it out out of clay. Doesn't look like much right now. <laughs> so um, after I had a pattern for the shoulder pads, I started making them. And it's uh, uh, the white part is Wonderflex, and the black and r red parts are. Um, they're, they're the craft foam, but in three millimeter thickness. So it's like the thickest that you can get um, without having to special order them. So all it is is just, I just hot glued it together, you know, half a piece. And then, and then I started covering it. So using the same pattern, I cut out the Donna Velvet and started covering all the different areas. And, then, um, so the, the, it, it's like it's an overlayer, and then underneath is another piece. So that piece had to be gold, and then it had to have all the uh, the lines, like the lines that they draw so easily in anime. But that I have to spend hours <laughs> freaking sewing trim onto. Like, oh, thanks, designers. All you had to do is draw for three seconds, and <laughs> that's like two days of my life wasted, <laughs> you know, to try to re replicate it. So I measured it out and pinned it down, stitched it, you know, piece by piece, and you know, had it all like had my measuring tape there, made sure it was fairly even. So I had to label everything because then otherwise you'd totally forget. So after a while, 
when you had the cover, it started to take shape. Um, and I stuffed the inside with some batting just to make sure it held up a little better. So that, I don't even know how long that took. I think each shoulder pad took, I think the first one took me 20 hours or something. Just the, just the first one, just because I had to lay down the groundwork and do the patterns and, you know, figure out all the pieces. And then the, the rest of them went really fast. Because then she has the same, like, similar types of pads on her hips as well. And those went really fast. So. Um, and then after it was done, I was like, all right, well, I wanted to look fairly nice on the inside as well. I didn't want it just to be a mess of fabrics. So then I, um, I, I stitched it all together and then I uh, put felt on the inside and very carefully whip stitched around and cut it off as I went along. And this is what the finished shoulder pad looks like. <coughs> Sides. And then they ended up just snapping on, it just so sort of snaps onto it. Okay, so now we move on to making the uh, sleeves. So the sleeves were just um, um, strips of fabric alternating in color and material, uh, sewn together, sewn together some more until I got a whole big piece of it. I did two of those. And then they were sewn into the into the sleeves. Here I am casting buttons because she has, like if I go back to my reference picture real quick. She has like these gold buttons or something. They look like buttons like all over her outfit. Just make it here. So back here in the front, and then there's some on her hips, and you know, so I was like, ah, oh, gold buttons. I could just do a plain gold button, or I could cast a button with a design on it and sort of have a little bit more, you know, oomph to it, a little bit more of a um, realistic aspect. So I found this button with a lion on it, and I made a, uh, made a silicone mold and then cast it out with plastic. So here are many of them. And then they just got pinbacks. I just um, I just glued pinbacks onto them after painting them gold. I think I made 16 or so. Here are just the patterns for the front of the bodice. Like she has like this round part in the middle. And so I just made it, I made just, it's better to make it too big and then go, you know, cut down than not have it big enough. She has right here. See, it's hard to see. The, hard, the reference is really difficult to see on this costume, but in the front, she has like this weird part. So, and um, I, I had duck cloth on the inside and on the outside. This is actually the lining, so it's like a nice little, like, I forgot even what fabric I used for it. It wasn't really a satin, it was some kind of a polyester as the lining. And then um, I duplicated it in velvet. And here I'm stitching things together. So then I got kind of bored doing that, so I went on and started making the skirt pieces. And again, I had to uh, use the black trim that I bought um, probably 80 yards of, something like that in the end. Um, and had to cut them up and diagonally stitch them on, measuring along the way. <laughs> They're just hanging out. And uh, here is the beginning of the collar. Um, it's wire frame with Wonder Flex stretched over it. And that was an uh, evening of fun, heating Wonder Flags, stretching it over wire, burning myself along the way, and trying to somehow make the shape fairly three-dimensional. And I sized it to my shoulders, and it turns out that my shoulders are uneven. Like, I need to go to a chiropractor or something. <laughs> like, 
putting it on the mannequin, you're just like, it's not even, but when it's on me, it actually is. So I'm like, I need to go to the chiropractor. I'm like, probably walk around like this or something. It's the years of costuming and wearing wings, I'm telling you. Um, here, it, like basically after the Wonderflex was put on, then I layered it with a thin layer of uh, batting so that it would sort of get rid of the roughness and then stretch satin over it. And of course, I couldn't sew it, so I had to very carefully glue it down, because of course, with the wire frame, you can't throw that in, in the machine. Here it is putting steel boning into the bodice. Um, I label all my boning, and I cut them accordingly. And um, it just, it, I wanted to, to, the bodice to have enough structure to hold itself um, up because the front was completely open, so I didn't want it to just be numb. Oh, this is this is the same trim, but it only like I ran out of the black and I bought gray and I tried to dye it black and it failed. Like this was me testing it out and like literally submerged it in black dye for like oh a day or so and it still came out like this dark blue, like new. So I had to order more of the black trim. Um, here are the hair combs that I used to start the, the wig, the wig with. So just this, you know, hair combs that you can get in Joann's. And uh, I cut up two wigs, about two wigs for uh, Carmilla, cut one of them up and used the, it to uh, create the hair combs and also used the top of it to add more hair mm -hmm. to the second wig. And you can see some of my hats hanging out that I make. And then Mr. Bubbles, because I need a <laughs> bubble bath after you know a hard day of work on costumes. Uh, I'm sorry, these pictures are like skipping back and forth. I think I just randomly try to document everything every day. Um, so far, any questions? I, I'm just kind of going along, explaining how I did it. But if any, if I'm going too fast, or any of you have a specific question about a part, let me know. How do you go about? I'm doing this dynamic, like it's real coming through you from real about high school, and she literally has two different hair colors. Like in, in one episode, it's two different hair colors. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you go about translating that into making a cosplay? Oh, yeah, don't we love those animators and artists that just like decide, you know, oh, today her eyes are blue, tomorrow they're green, or her hair color is going to be, you know, burgundy, you know, one day and then pink on the other. I mean, you either pick the color that you like the most or that you identify the most with, you know, as the character, or you can, if you wanted to be really crafty, you can actually blend two wigs together. You can sew wefts into one wig, or you can sharpie dye it to be a sort of a, a tone in between the colors. It really just, it depends on how dedicated you are to the character, and you know, you kind of, kind of have to like set an image in your mind and kind of follow it through. No other questions? I'll keep going then. Okay. So the way I did the hair combs is I cut them down and then I held them up to my head and was like, oh, this is way too big. Sand it down a little more, cut it down a little more, hold it up to my head and be like, I have a really small head. <laughs> Do it a little bit more. Uh, I don't know why, but I always think that I need more fabric, I need bigger pieces than I actually do. Um, so finally, they were down to fairly, you know, proportionate shapes. Um, then I used the good old, like, glue wefts in, you know, strip by strip method, uh, where you basically, um, you take a, a stri strip of hair, like just a little tiny handful of hair, and you glue it on one end. And uh, I just used hot glue, did, even though it sort of eats through the foam because I knew it didn't have, like none of it will show. It would all be hidden. And it was just the fastest drying glue that I had at the time. So just hot glue it in and then you wrap it 
to the other side, and then hop with the other side. And then you just go strip by strip around the whole cone uh, until it is completely covered. And uh, you can use hairspray along the way to help sort of smooth it out, or you can mix Elmer's glue with water, half and half, and spray it on or brush it on, and that will definitely make sure that it's smooth. <clears throat> so that took probably six hours, just because just time consuming. And finally, I have the little hair combs. Doobie -doo. And here I am working on the sleeve slash train, because her sleeves turn into the train for some reason, and it's just a lot of fabric dragging around. So that was just a whole day of just wrestling with fabric. I had like fabric on over my head, and I'm like in a tent basically trying to sew a piece. And it's really hilarious. I had like at some point, I think I had to build something around me so that it was, would like hold it up or something, or it's out of my way. It's just piles and piles of fabric. Uh, so yeah, the velvet is lined. And those are the sleeve strips. Here my dog is like, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you taking up the space I usually play in? <laughs> like it went up the, across the whole living room, basically. So all this, like where the pins are, I don't know if you guys can see, all these pins, they, um, I had a hand stitch around this entire area because I didn't want it to show so I wanted to blind stitch all of it. Oh, well, these are the ones that I that I finished on. Let me go back to here we go. Okay, so we were down here. Um so so yeah here is me trying on the unfinished Home. See, it fits my shoulders. <laughs> I'm like, yay, I think it works. <laughs> and then to hide everything, I put a gold, I mean, a red trim around it. Again, it had to be all glued, hand stitched, all that jazz. So it took a long time. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we have the wig. So this is what the wig looked like. This is the second wig, and the cones are from the first wig. So I just hand stitched with a with a curved needle. I stitched the cones onto the hair. I mean onto the, the second wig. And then I try to blend it. So I use the extra hair to blend into the cone. So I like take a little bit and then glue it here at the ends, right here. And so that it ended up looking more like it came from the head as opposed to just a complete different piece uh, sewn on. So use that to blend it in on the back as well. And then I went to make the hairline. Because I thought, Carmilla has such an interesting, like, you see her jagged hairline? I'm like, that is so cool. And that's kind of really part of her character and makes her look very, you know, menacing. And I just, I did not want to have just a round hairline. I was like, I, I need to do something about that. So um, my plan was to um, make a hairline by using Elmer's glue and water, like I said before. And uh, basically, just soaking strips of fabric. And here you can tell how many strips. That's like I don't know, what, like 20 over 20 strips of fabrics. Um, soaking them into just a fan shape, and then cutting out the um, the hairline shape. And I have a I think I used a foam, just a craft foam backing, where I held it up to my head and sort of. <clears throat> And you can see, sort of figure out, you know, where, how, even like how long it needed to be, what kind of a curve, curvature it needed to have. And uh, the trick with this is just to wait for like a day. After you soak it in the hour school, just wait a whole day. And leave it alone, let it dry completely, and then you can manipulate it. Here we have more, more things being sculpted and cast. So 
I sewed the hairline onto the wig, and now that looks ridiculous. <laughs> and then uh, very carefully, I started blending it. Let's see, I don't have a picture of that. Okay. Yeah, I just ended up blending it in and cutting it and just making it look good. Like sometimes you like you can't even describe what you're doing. You're just like, I'm just trying to make it work. And like later on, like you work for 18 hours straight, and afterwards you don't remember what what you did, but it works. And you're like, okay. So here we have the, I believe that's the scorpion piece. Yeah, that was the scorpion piece being um, molded, and then the necklace pieces. And here is the mold for the uh, gold. Um, how would you say it? The hair accessory for this part, basically, for these parts. That's also being molded. And then I tried to paint it various different ways and failed a couple times. <laughs> uh, here I'm finishing the finishing the uh, bodice. Um, oh, and the what, what ended up working with the the hair piece. This piece is just acrylic paint because acrylic paint is flexible, like I tried to spray paint it and because it's made out of a rubber, uh, urethane rubber, it, you know, the, the rubber stretched around to make a cone, but the paint did not, so it started flaking. So with acrylic paint, the paint itself is flexible, so if you ever have to paint anything that is, you know, stretchy um, in any way, any rubbers, any foams, anything, try to use acrylic paint because it's gonna be a lot more forgiving. So from here on, so much handwork had to be done because I did the cutout around the front and then the only way I could really line it up and make sure that it was even is on the mannequin because it just I just did not want to take any chances of sewing something and then you know, messing it up. So I just sewed everything on, on the mannequin and I was like, you know, twisting over, trying to get to certain parts, and it just, like, all this trim was sewn on by hand, just just because I just did not want to, you know, mess up for whatever reason. So, there's the wig hanging out. So, here is the wig with the blended pieces. Again, it's just, you know, I see I have the uh, spray glue, and then I have hairspray, and then I have all these random things. Um, then I had to fit those uh, end pieces onto her hair, which are, as you can see, she has like gold end pieces. So I just used the um, plastic, um, just the plastic globes that you can get at, you know, Michael's or Joanne's, and then I used the um, this is like tubing from Home Depot, and <laughs> just glued two of them together. Um, and then I had to, oh, here's the necklace pieces. I cast a bunch of them, just in case. Always cast extras. Hold on, I have a picture of that other piece that I was talking about. Do, 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 do. Here it is. So here, here are these pieces that I'm working on. <clears throat> so <clears throat> because they have like a, a indention in the middle, they look like bells actually, they look like big bells for some reason. Um, I, <clears throat> I mass it off and drew where they need to be and then I cut it just with a Dremel tool. See, it's, it's kind of uneven, but then um, once you sand it down a little bit, it kind of works. And then I put a piece of foam on the inside just to, you know, fill it in. And here you can see the beginnings of her earrings, which are just wooden sticks glued together with more wooden balls. They just earrings. These, this was just very last one. This is the one piece that I wish I had done in plastic, but ended up just doing out of foam. It's the front. I don't know, cod piece? I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's just really weird. Um, oh, these are like the little things that are on her armpits for some reason. She has like just little things on her armpits. 
Um, those were for her hair. She had like little hair danglies. Um, oh yeah, I want to talk about the back. So the back is kind of interesting because I was trying to think how I wanted it to lace up. Like I definitely wanted to be able to cinch in and lace up so underneath you can see the uh, eyelids that I did. But then I devised a pattern for the outside that would Velcro over and appear as if it didn't have a seam. And the way, the, the reason I decided to do that is because if you look, there is a very distinct picture of her back. And she does not have a zipper, she does not have, you know, any lacing. There's like no, you know, you can't see how the costume gets on her, like it's as if she just kind of magically, you know, shimmies into it. And uh, that doesn't work in real life. <laughs> so I ended up just making um, a pattern for the outside that would Velcro shut and uh, be able to hide like all that underneath. So sometimes you have to sort of think outside the box and you know, like do hidden panels and things like that to make something work, but it, it just all depends on how, I guess, how how accurate you want to be, or you know, like do you really want like the lacing to show, do you care if it shows? In some incidences, your hair will cover it because the character has super long hair, so it doesn't really matter. But I thought in Carmilla, especially for the stage, I wanted it to like be a 350 view. Um, and if you look at my pictures, I don't even know if I have a back picture, come to think of it. I spent all this time on the back, and I don't even know if I have a back picture of it. Oh. Yeah, these are all fun pictures. I did do a photo shoot at AWA, and I haven't even gone through the pictures yet. So these are like some that I just, you know, these are friends that took them for us. and. Uh, my friends, uh, Chris and Janet from Florida, actually did uh, D and uh, I forgot her name. What was her name again? Layla. Yes. Did uh, and so we did a photo shoot together, and that was really cool. Oh, and the front is being held together by fishing which sounds like it's kind of dangerous, but actually, like even without the fishing line, the dress basically holds itself together. It's just that for you know movement, for you know, be it reaching out or bending a certain way, I didn't want things to come undone. So that's why I put the fishing line just as an extra precaution. And then I have a big petticoat underneath. And the other problem with this costume is that because everything like the velvet and the satin and everything is kind of slippery, it's just you need a handler to like constantly, you know, lay things right. And I'm just thinking, how in the world in the movie could, was she perfect? Every single shot, like her train didn't, you know, do what mine did. Her train is like perfectly, you know, even and wrinkle free, and she's like dragging it everywhere. Like that would never happen. <laughs> so I think that's always really funny when you do a costume and you're just like, how did this character, you like, especially in fighting games, I love it when like a fighting game character has like an off the shoulder outfit and then they're like being able to like reach up and kick and punch and you know all different directions you're just like i can't even move my my arms you know besides this much so it's always so hilarious to me you're all loungy <laughs> had to do some stairway shots. We're like, we found some stairs! Let's take pictures on it! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wish the railings weren't there, right? And we did this on a Sunday, too, because we just didn't want to deal with a big crowd. And it actually worked out really well, because then we didn't have that many people walking around while we were doing the photo shoot. Wow. 
So here you have the full length of the train, 216 feet. And after I wear it, I have to 
take a shower because <laughs> I look absolutely insane. Like once I get out of it with the white and the crazy, you know, the crazy makeup. I mean, I just look literally demented. So like I have to completely, you know, take a shower and clean up. Uh, so the chances of this being brought out again, like maybe once a year, I'll wear this. So think about it. It's like it'll probably last. Uh, sadly, and you know, given that I've been making costumes for 12 years, I still have some from literally 12 years ago. Yeah. And just purely for sentimental reasons. I mean, it's like they're, you know, crafted kind of shoddily, and I doubt that anybody would want to buy them. <laughs> so, but I just can't bring myself to throw them away. It is, it is rough. So, thank God I do have basement space. So, they kind of just <laughs> hang out in the basement in boxes. Um, I do really need to clean out my closet though. I have like three closets just for costumes, plus boxes down in the basement, and then like random things like wings and things. Yeah, I've sold a couple of my costumes in the past. Like uh, once it was just purely out of necessity. I just, you know, I was in a bad spot and I needed money. And was like, I'm gonna buy a Lulu costume. And I was like, oh, I've worn it a few times. I don't think I'll wear it again. And she was like, I'll pay, I think she paid, she paid like $700 for them. And I was like, oh, that's nice. Couldn't use that. <laughs> so, but now of course I'm like, oh, I sold my Lulu, kind of miss dressing up as Lulu. So maybe in the future I'll, I'll remake it. So that's a good thing. We can remake things at least, that's, you know. Um, but yeah, most of them are still there. <laughs> yes, in the back. All right. um, was that train just one piece, or did you have to sew several pieces to give that length? Oh, it was one piece. It was one piece. I just bought yards and yards and yards of fabric. <laughs>
if you do scotch guard around, then uh, it's easier to clean and just prevents your, your clothing from staining. Did you have just one aid helping you get into this, or were there multiple people helping you? Um, two people. <laughs> I need at least two people. Yeah, like to, to get the dress on, eventually it takes two. And because of the makeup, because you have to put the makeup on first, and then when you put the dress on, you don't want it to, you know, like, you don't want the, the dress to, like, rip the makeup off. So it takes, like, kind of two people to shimmy me into it. So, yeah. And then, like, once you have it on, you really can't do anything. You're like, I need this. And you can't really reach for it. You can't bend over. You're kind of, like, helpless. So, which is why, like, uh, I, our, my friends and I, we try to help each other, like, on one day, they'll do a library costume, and I'll be their handler. And then on the second day, I'll do my library costume, and they can help me. And so just have, have friends and you know do favors for each other. Uh, we have a little less than 10 minutes. Any other last minute questions? Yes. sort of will naturally sort of 
dull it a little bit. If you imagine a mixed uh, yellow wig with blonde uh, strips, it kind of overall would blend together and not be as long. With all the glue song, uh, I just hand clean it. I, I, I don't even trust the dry cleaner to clean it. Like the train is Scotch Guard. Like the whole train, I just flipped it and just soaked it in Scotch Guard, basically, just sprayed the heck out of it. And so from that standpoint, it's it's okay, it's held up so far. But you know, I only have worn this, I believe, three times. So it's not super dirty yet. But then, yeah, I just I just hand wash it, like basically in parts, spot wash it, and just super carefully. So it, it is rough sometimes, you know. Some costumes are just, you know, you really have to think of creative ways to keep them keep them clean. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I had a suggestion for you for the nails. You said you wanted to be able to do something. Mm -hmm. They make these nail covers that are supposed to be for when your nails are drying and they're nail shaped and mm -hmm. they just grip onto your fingers individually so you'd be able to slip them on and off. Really? Cool. And I mean, mm -hmm. they're not that long, but you could probably make them longer. Okay, all right, so they're just uh, nail covers. Yeah. Okay, right. cool. Yeah, thanks for the suggestion. Yeah, I'll check it out. <laughs> Any last minute questions? I think we have about three minutes. Um, anything you guys would like to know more about or? I hope it's been informative. <laughs> yeah, I hope it's been informative, you know. Um, yeah, sure. But, um, oh yeah, he, I bought them from this guy who like goes to cons and like custom makes fangs for people. And it's pretty awesome. Yeah, he like Yeah, yeah, like a dragon con. He's always there or what's the last convention? He was a mega con in Florida. Yeah, and so, you know, I, I've had mine for a few years, and I actually need a new pair, so if I see him again, I'll be hitting him up. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely, especially if you want to, like, dress up as a vampire multiple times. <laughs> that was my first time. It was actually kind of interesting, because I, I hadn't gotten used to speaking with the fangs yet, so I was, like, half 